Hey guys, Zomfox here, and today we're doing the second of, I guess now, three different cut videos we're going to be making this weekend, because another three teams have made their official 50-man roster cuts, cutting up to eight players down from the 58 roster cut that happened a couple weeks ago, down to the 50 that is required by tomorrow, March 23rd, 2024. Now, the three teams today are the Stallions, Brahmas, and Battlehawks, who have all cut their teams down to 50 members, meaning that tomorrow we should get the final two teams of the Memphis Showboats and the Michigan Panthers cutting down their teams to 50 players. I will probably be making an updated video combining all eight of these teams to come out probably Sunday or Monday, where I give my overall thoughts after a couple of days and a couple of these players sign. But without further ado, let's get started by looking at the Birmingham Stallions. Now, the Stallions players that were cut were Bubba Bolden, safety, Slade Bolden, wide receiver, Cole Cabrell, center, O'Shea Dugas, offensive line, Malik Hall, outside linebacker, Myron Mitchell, receiver, Chauncey Rivers, defensive end, and Andre Saint, a more defensive end. Now, there's one other caveat. Victor Bolton Jr. was, like, removed from the roster a couple days ago, but we haven't heard any actual word of him yet. So, I'm assuming we might end up seeing him be put on IR in the next couple days, or he might have gotten released earlier. I don't know, just a quick one to, you know, keep out for. It is a, you know, developing story because he is such a massive player, so we'll see for that. But in terms of these guys... There's one really big surprising one, and that's probably St. Namor. St. Namor was like third in the USFL this past season at sacks for like six. I fully expect this is like a Tim Ward situation, if you heard about that news the past couple days, where as soon as, I'd assume today, he might sign with the Memphis Showboats. Go back to John Filippo. He was with New Orleans last year. Or I wouldn't even be shocked if he goes to the Roughnecks because of the fact that Keontae Shot is now with the Roughnecks, who was his running mate in New Orleans this past season. Andre St. Namor is one of the best pass rushers either league had to offer this past season. And while he did kind of flow under the radar, he still was a very elite player. And the fact that he is now available, I would assume he gets signed very quickly, probably to the Roughnecks or the Showboats to be a huge addition to him. The Stallions are one of those teams that just have a ton of talent everywhere. And so it's not super surprising that he got cut. But again, it is still a big surprise because this is a really good player. And then Myron Mitchell is one of those who, while being a solid receiver that I think a team like the Brahmas probably should go after... As I've talked about in comments with other people before, of all the players that were here this past season for the Stallions, he felt like the one that was probably going to be pushed out, whether it be to a reserve role as a backup or just released. It did kind of feel like he was the bigger name that was going to get cut rather than like Deion Kane or Marlon Williams or something like that. So not super surprising, but still a couple big cuts, especially St. Amore. Now the next one we have to talk about is the Battlehawks, who released defensive tackle Kevin Atkins, outside linebacker Nico Bolden, Darian Chafin, wide receiver, Amike Agbule, outside linebacker, Chris Garrett, defensive end, Drew Lewis, inside linebacker, Stephen Mitchell Jr., wide receiver, and Dallas Warmack, tackle. The two receivers are no surprise at all. We've talked about it many times before. This is a team that, despite losing Jacor Pearson for a few weeks, is basically not even going to miss him because of just how loaded their receiving core is. Not a surprise either of them got cut. They're not, you know, some of those top-tier receivers they have. Makes sense. Then Kevin Atkins, though, that one is a bit of a surprise. This is a dude who was there the whole year last year. You know, he wasn't like, you know, an, an insane player, but he was a really good, solid player to have on your D-line. This is a guy that I would expect Michigan to probably go after. Michigan has a bit of a DT problem. I would not be shocked if they ever go after him, but we'll see about that. All in all, this is, again, not a massive group of surprises. The Battle Ox, you pretty much knew what their roster was going to be. Again, not anything super surprising, though. Kevin Atkins is a bit of a shock. Then lastly, the San Antonio Brahmas, they only had to cut a few players, but a couple of them, one of them is a pretty big surprise. Kalike, Ani Yelbecki, inside linebacker, Terrence Lang, defensive end, Mark Milton, cornerback, Calvin Turner, wide receiver, Jordan Vesey, wide receiver, and Jared Williams, tackle. Mark Milton is like a, wow, really? I mean, this is a guy who like just signed with them, if I'm not mistaken. Like, I literally posted a video yesterday talking about him signing to the team. So, yeah. Kind of like Zaquandre White, or White with the defenders. He kind of got screwed over, came in really late at camp, and probably wasn't given a truly fair shot at making it. But then Jordan Vesey is a bit of a shock. This is one of the guys that on paper was one of their best receivers, and this is a team that has an issue at wide receiver. They're basically banking on health to come back to the number one receiver. So I'm kind of shocked at that release. I, I really am. I feel like they might be expecting they can sign one or two big receivers as, well, yes, this is setting their roster down to 50 players. They still can, you know, cut and sign guys the next couple days and all that. But Jordan VC is a bit of a shock. None of the other ones are, like, massive surprises. Again, with some of the roughnecks that are probably becoming available with all these cuts, I wouldn't be shocked if, you know, Wade Phillips is trying to get some more of his guys from last year to come back. Or if there's just other plays they think are better than them. But VC is a bit of a shock. So, yeah. 
that'll do it for these three teams. Like I said before, I'm probably going to do a fully updated video where I kind of go over my thoughts again on all eight of these teams once they all come out. But tomorrow will be just the Showboats and Panthers as they're the two teams that still have to make their cuts. So the full video combining all eight teams or a new video of all eight teams will be coming out Sunday, the 24th or the 25th. Then, of course, next Tuesday is the Week 1 Power Rankings video. And then next Thursday or Friday will be my Game Picks video, revamped from what we did last year in the past two years. So be on the lookout for that. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified as soon as I upload any video so you know exactly when those are coming out and you'll be notified. If you want to become a member, it's as little as $1 a month and you get a bunch of perks, including one exclusive video per month. And as always, have a great night.